Welcome to the Joyful Mud Puddles podcast. Support you can count on in your parenting journey. Today I have Dr. Orlina Carrick, trained as a pediatric physician. She's now a health coach and creator of the program Fit and Fabulous Family. She's been featured on Mind Body Green and BBC. Her podcast Fit and Fabulous is available on iTunes. A mom to four, Dr. Orlina helps families create easy habits and systems they love so they can all feel fit and fabulous without having to think about it. That is so perfect and so timely with everything that's going on in the world. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came from physician to health coach? Well, first of all, hello, Megan, and thank you so much for having me here. I will, I'll give you the short version of my life history, shall I? Um, sure. As you can tell, I'm from the United Kingdom. And, you know, I trained as a pediatric doctor. I always had this dream that I wanted to travel and work. And, I, and slightly ironically, one of the reasons I went into medicine was because I wanted to travel and work. And I had ideas of working in India and Africa and all these amazing places and obviously then had children. So I couldn't really go and do all that really rural, throw yourself in. I guess I could have done, but I didn't. So I had this dream that I was going to live somewhere else. And about nine or 10 years ago, with my eyes wide shut, we moved to Spain, which we totally loved. And I thought I was just going to carry on being a doctor. We were all in the European Union at the time, and I thought it was just going to be easy. But to cut a really long story short, it was not easy. And essentially, I gave up doing clinical medicine, which for me at the time was a total heartache and really sad. And one of those sort of, you know, journeys in your life that at the time I think I was grieving. But out of that came lots of really positive things. So for me, it was looking at my parent, you know, how I was parenting my children, my relationships with my kids, the way I was thinking, the way I was showing up and all of those things. So it was really instrumental in my journey as a coach. So to begin with, I did lots of work on um, helping children to eat healthily because that obviously tied in. I wrote a book called Feeding Toddlers and another one called How to Teach Your Kids to Love Vegetables because hey, guess what? I had picky eaters who didn't want to eat any vegetables. (laughs) And I thought, I'm gonna figure this out. And then a few years ago, I pivoted to adults and I did weight loss coaching because that was the problem that people particularly had. And my real message is, do you know what? It's really easy to lead a healthy life, to eat healthily, to look after ourselves and to feel feel amazing. And a lot of people don't really understand that. They think they're stuck in this rut and that they have to carry on doing what they're doing. And they just don't realize that actually with a few smallish changes, they can lead this amazing life. And so now I've kind of put it all together and I do families. And my passion is just showing people that there is this healthy living where you feel amazing and your life is amazing. And it's about creating your perfect life. And by by that, I mean, I would say I have a really luxurious life. I don't mean I go and spend loads of money and I'm super wealthy. I mean, I get to do exactly what I want to do. I go swimming. Here we swim in the Mediterranean Sea. It's beautiful. But in the winter, it's in a swimming pool. So not that luxurious, but amazing that I get to do it. And I do yoga and I have now started running and all these exciting things that I want to do and really just enjoying being in the moment, living life for now. So that's my, that's my message in a nutshell. I love that. And I love that you took something that, you know, it could have been devastating to, you know, lose your identity and your profession, but you've turned that around and now you're helping families and doing what you're passionate about which is fantastic. And I'm super lucky. And I do think I'm super lucky. And I don't think I'm anybody different. And I know that life always, you know, it's messy and untidy, particularly when you have kids, you know, kids are frustrating. Life isn't perfect, perfect. It's not that my children don't argue all the time, which they do do. (laughs) And, you know, they call each other names. I don't have four perfect children. I have four what do we say, highly strung children. They've been in lockdown for the last however many months. We've seen an awful lot of each other. So life isn't perfect, but it's about taking it all and going, okay, this is life. It doesn't get any more perfect than this. And it's amazing to have these amazing children who drive me up the wall at times, but taking a step back and really recognizing that amazing luck that we, you know, a lot of us have. I love 
I love this. <laughs> I just love your attitude towards kids, which is exactly what I, I, I'm saying the same message to parents all the time about how, you know, how precious they are and what, how blessed we are. Now, you mentioned that this healthy lifestyle really isn't that co as complicated as we make it. So do you have some easy steps or tips for us? Yeah, totally. And it's not, it's not complicated. I think you can get into the nitty gritty and, you know, nutrition can be controversial, but the way I teach healthy living is with four pillars. So nutrition is a really, really, really big one. And in a nutshell, what I will say about nutrition is eat more vegetables, fruit and vegetables, things like nuts and seeds, legumes, what you call garbanzo beans, we call them chickpeas, those kind of really delicious, healthy things. It's all about fiber and vegetables. And you want to reduce your packaged, you know, processed foods. And in that, I include what I call white carbohydrates. So, you know, bread, pasta, all of those things. And essentially, that's it. That's it in a nutshell. And it's so simple. And we've known this for a long time. But we do get caught up in, you know, trying to make it complicated. And it's not really complicated. So that's nutrition. And, you know, I'm happy to go into more detail. Um, oils is another thing that I think, you know, we have been sold this low fat diet, which was good for us. And now we're seeing that that clearly isn't a healthy way of eating and that actually we do need oils. I particularly love extra virgin olive oil, partly because I live in Spain and it's what they grow here in Spain. But there is slightly more evidence around that than other oils. But, you know, it's simple. And I feed four children. I don't spend hours cooking. I do obviously cook for them, but it's not complicated stuff. My idea of, you know, an amazing meal is to take some beautiful vegetables, chop them up, throw them in the oven, and that's it, you know, it's not complicated. It's just easy and tasty and delicious. You know, super delicious. So that's nutrition. Pillar two is exercise. And I think exercise is really important. A lot of people think exercise is good for weight loss. You know, I said I did some work with weight loss and a lot of people have this idea that in order to lose weight, they need to exercise and it's not true. If you want to lose weight, you have to look at your nutrition. However, exercise will help you lose weight, but exercise is really where you feel fit and fabulous. It's where you get all those benefits for your body, for your heart, for your lungs, for your muscles, where you really look after your body and you get all those endorphins. It's something that really helps you feel amazing. And people often say, oh, I don't want to exercise. I'm too tired to exercise. And I say, no, it's the other way around. When you're tired, you want to go and exercise. When I start getting grumpy, my husband says, can you please go for a swim? <laughs> because it's something that really just lifts me up. And step number, well, pillar number three is sleep. Sleep is super, super, super important. There's so much really interesting research on sleep now. And again, it's kind of, we know this, it's not rocket science. You know that when you've had a bad night's sleep, you've been up late, well, perhaps your children are keeping you up or you've been partying or for whatever reason, but you know the next morning that you're tired and grumpy and you can't be the person that you really want to be. You can't feel fit and fabulous. So again, it's not big news, but it's something that a lot of people don't do. And the fourth pillar, which I think ties everything up is the way we think about things. So our emotions, our emotional wellness. And within that, I include mindfulness, but it's really about giving our brain space and thinking about emotions. It's not about feeling happy all the time, but obviously that's the goal. Ideally, we all want to feel happy. And with those four pillars, I think we can just make changes, little changes and do what we spiral up. So what the changes that we make build on new changes. So you know, for example, if I'm going to be up swimming at seven o'clock in the morning, I suspect I'm not going to have a beer the night before. So that's something that I've done slightly better. Or I might want to eat slightly more nutritiously because I want to give myself energy to do that swim. And we do. It just it's kind of contagious. The little changes that you make, they build up and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's just you carry on on this journey, making sure you enjoy it. And essentially, that's healthy living in a nutshell. Super easy. I love that you mentioned that it's a journey because it's not just a one-time thing. And another thing you said was all about the small changes. And I have a whole thing that I was talking about a while ago about small doable changes, because when we try to change everything, 
we end up burning out or giving up or, you know, it's just too much. But if you just change one small thing at a time. Yeah, then absolutely. It up, right? Yes, absolutely. And I think the other key, which I haven't mentioned, is habits. So, you know, you've brought this up is a really thing. What you're talking about is habits. And it's really easy to have habits that are not serving us from point of view of health. So, you know, I was saying before we started recording that I'd seen this article recently about children now becoming more sedentary in terms of lockdown and getting, you know, children who eat vegetables now getting into the habit of eating more processed foods. And those are habits that you don't want children to have but they are just habits. And in the same way as the food that we provide our kids, it's just a habit. And the flip side of that is you can create good habits and it all, that's where it all happens without thinking. So if you can create food that is based on vegetables without thinking, it is just a habit. And a lot of people think that people who lead healthy lives are very, very disciplined and that's why they have good habits. And it's not true, it's not about discipline. It's about setting up your life so that your habits come naturally. And there's loads of books that have been written by this, about this. My favorite one is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And you know, he talks about, for example, different ways of setting your life up, but it is all about that. So let me give you an example. I love swimming and during school time, I go swimming on Tuesday and Thursday. And here in Spain, children go to school twice a day. So they do morning school and then they go back to school between three and five. So at 2.30, I walk my children to school. Now, I may decide, oh, I don't really want to go swimming today, but I'm not gonna have that same decision about my kids going to school. It's not like I'm ever gonna go, oh, do you know what? Let's not, let's not bother with school today. <laughs> so I'm gonna drop my kids off at school. I've got my swimming stuff and I'm gonna take myself down to the swimming pool. I'm gonna go swimming. I treat myself to a three minute sauna on the way out. This is in the winter. And I do the same thing in reverse. So I put myself on this train, this swimming train as it were. And it's really difficult for me actually to say, do you know what, I'm not going swimming. In order for me to do that, I really have to make a big effort to decide not to go swimming because I have to come up with a good reason not to or you know, convince my swimming trainer, do you know what, I've decided I'm not going swimming today and she's standing at the edge of the pool and I'm going, it's, it's too cold. You know, it's not gonna happen. So if you think about how you set up your life and make these habits easy, then everything just falls into place. And you're absolutely right. If you try and do too much at once, then it all just falls apart because our brains just get a little bit exhausted and go, whoa, back to the old habits. And that's why it falls apart. That's it's so true. And I love that you're talking about how parents need to give themselves the same priority that they give their kids. Because we've all know that you can't care for your family if you're on empty or if you're depleted, you have to care for yourself. Do you have any other suggestions for parents on that self care? Yeah, no, totally. And that was exactly where I was at that time when, you know, I had lost my medical career, I had four young kids, they were under four and a half and, you know, so much stress and angst. And I think the first thing really is recognizing it. And for me, it was realizing that I was stressed, but, you know, I wasn't working in a busy A&E department at the time. All I was doing, all in inverted commas, was I had the kids. And I found myself sort of snapping at them a bit more. You know, things just became they took on so much more gravitas. And as I say, you know, life now isn't perfect. It's not like my children don't complain, but the difference is that I can generally turn up in a way that I can manage my children without getting overwhelmed by their emotions. And children, you know, we do have these things called mirror neurons. So when your children get shouty and upset, we mirror that emotion in the same way that, you know, you, you laugh. When you hear somebody laughing, our natural instinct is to laugh and you've no idea what they're laughing about. And everyone's going, it's really funny. And you think, what's really funny? But it's just contagious and so are negative emotions. So really, you want to be able to look after yourself so that you can look after your children in that best place. And I always say the best thing you can give your children is your own happiness. And I really believe that, not just because you're turning up in a better way, but also you're teaching your kids to be happy because children, how do they learn stuff? They model it. They model, they learn healthy eating from us being, doing healthy eating. They learn healthy living from us doing healthy living. They learn how to be happy by watching us being happy and how we manage our emotions and how we manage our lives. So 
so many good reasons to look after yourself. But I totally understand why people don't because life happens and it gets busy and everything just gets overwhelmed. So step one, recognize it. Step two, give yourself permission to, to really decide, you know, I actually, I need to start looking after myself. And then step three, I think step three is super fun. I think step three, I mean, you know, there are different ways of doing it, but this is my way, is then have a look at your life and think, do you know what? I'm going to create my own amazing ideal life. Obviously within the confines of, you know, I've got four kids and we live in Spain and, you know, they go to school here. But how do I want my life to be? If I could just paint my life, how would I feel? I would feel amazing when I woke up every morning. What would I be doing? I would be swimming and cycling. Now, you might not put exercise on it right to begin with, but that's because you haven't got the exercise bug yet. <laughs> but, you know, you can create this perfect life. I would be thin and fitting into my wedding dress or my honeymoon shorts or something like that. Now, you have to be realistic because you can't really say, okay, I would be thin and carry on eating the same way I'm eating if, you've, if you want to lose weight. So you can't mess around with it. But when you're there, you would love healthy food. You would enjoy healthy food. So you create this end goal. This is how I want my life to be. And then you work out how to get there. And you don't need to know every step right at the beginning. All you need to know is the first step. This is the one change I'm going to make. I'm going to make sure I get to bed on time and give myself eight hours sleep. And I'm going to do that for a week. And that's, you know, it's such a small thing to do, but it's a big change, actually. That is amazing advice because it's, it's just, it's relatable and it's doable. And yeah, having that end goal in mind, then we can figure out the steps to get there. Even if they're not perfect, we're still at least making some progress. So yeah, now, and this, oh, sorry, go on. Oh, no, go ahead. Well, I was going to say the steps become clear as you take them. So, you know, you will take one step and then you will think, so for me, I started swimming when I dropped my children off at the swimming pool. And one day I decided, do you know what? I'm going to swim. And I just started swimming for half an hour, you know, quite slowly. And then it built up to, oh, I'm going to do some swimming training. I'm going to sign up and do some swimming training. And then it built up to, you know, now I have friends and I go swimming every other day in the summer, which is, you know, three or four years later on. But I didn't think that right at the beginning. I didn't think, oh, if I do this one thing now, that's going to mean all of these things. I just did it one step at a time. And it's the same, you know, as I say, things build on it. So once you start eating more healthily and you start exercising a little bit more, and then you think, oh, do you know what? I'm going to try this amazing cake, which has no sugar in it. And my kids are going to love it. And it's going to be <laughs> really exciting. Or a new salad recipe that my kids are going to hate, but I'm going to love. And it's going to be amazing. And you just keep going up this spiral, this positive spiral. That's so fun. <laughs> no, I, I've had some interesting food creations. And, <laughs> and we, you mentioned food and we've got kids and let's just be honest, not all kids are as excited about healthy eating as the moms who go on Pinterest and find all these crazy recipes. So what tips do you have around food and kids? Yeah, totally. I, I don't think kids, any kids care about healthy eating, actually. So I think, you know, we need to take a step back and think, okay, children, like all adults, they are glucose-seeking missiles. You know, they love cake. That's perfectly normal. Of course they love cake. Do most two-year-olds eat cabbage? No. One of mine did actually eat lettuce when she was two, but she was a rarity. So, you know, it is normal for children to prefer sweet glucose foods and if even if your child isn't doesn't have a sweet tooth you know my kids will say they want well they do have sweet tooths but teeth they would say they wanted spaghetti bolognese every time i ask them what they want for dinner it would be spaghetti bolognese the same kind of easy to eat food that gives you a bit of a glucose rush so that's perfectly normal but we want to take a step back and think okay so what is our goal with healthy eating our goal is that well, oh, okay, they avoid all diet-related issues like constipation whilst they're kids, but ultimately, when they leave home, they love healthy foods and also that they can cook for themselves, which is a real bonus if they can, and that you know they're going to be independent and enjoy all of these health benefits by living a healthy life. And so that really takes the pressure off this one P. You don't have to battle that one P. But the way you get there is really by looking at the whole family diet and thinking, 
in order for my children to eat the vegetables, I have to be offering vegetables all the time, which is great news for you because really and truly everyone should be eating the same food. It makes it much easier to prepare the same food and you know, healthy food for mum, healthy food for dad, healthy food for the kids is basically vegetables with limits on the treats that you have. And we all need limits on treats. And I think that is a really easy way to sort of step, take a step back and realize that you can have this structure. And I, another thing I would say is eating routine as well, particularly if you've got young kids, they do need a routine. They need breakfast. I mean, it doesn't matter what your routine is, but normally it goes breakfast, snack, lunch, perhaps another snack, depending on what time you eat dinner. And you have these eating intervals and children in an ideal world should sit down and really take notice of what they're eating. I know that sometimes it's, you know, between clubs and stuff like that, but ideally that's what you want. Not as my daughter always wants to do walking. The number of times I have to say to her, can you please sit down and eat your snack? But she'll jump up and run around and, you know, she knows the rules, but they have to be enforced. And I think that is having that eating routine and allowing your children to not eat foods that they don't want to. So the idea is that as adults, we get to choose what the menu is and they get to choose what they want to eat that's on the menu. So that does mean you have to have that sort of idea in the back of your mind. My children, for example, would eat bread, bread, bread and bread if I let them. If I gave at lunchtime unlimited foodstuffs, they would just pick the bread and the protein and they wouldn't eat the vegetables. That's perfectly normal. But what I have to do is say, you can have this portion of bread, a reasonable size, you know, think what is appropriate for your child's age and a reasonable amount of protein. And then you can have free reign of the vegetables. You can eat any of the vegetables, as much vegetables as you want. It's not about keeping kids hungry. It's about saying, okay, this is what we eat. Mostly we eat vegetables and a little bit of the other things. And, you know, they get it. They get there in the end. <laughs> I like that you were talking about having, like they, they can choose from the menu because I know for myself, if I just don't buy it and it's not in the house, then it's not even an option and there's a whole lot less fighting. Although I'm surprised at what you can make with just some baking ingredients in the cupboard. So <laughs> now that they're getting older and they've discovered, you know, cinnamon sugar on bread is just as tasty if mommy doesn't buy Nutella. So, uh. But yeah, well, the more I talk about it as my kids get older and now they're understanding and they're able to come alongside me and help with that as well, which is great yes. getting them involved. Yeah, and uh, you know, my kids cook as well. And this is where, you know, that my kids love to cook sugary things. And whenever I make cakes, which, you know, we don't have very many cakes and biscuits in our house. You're absolutely right. I just, a few years ago, I stopped by, well, you call cookies. I stopped buying them because I got so fed up. My children could sniff them out. You know, they knew when they were in the house and they would just get eaten. And that limit would just get pushed and pushed and pushed. And I got bored enforcing that limit until I just went, you know what? I'm just not buying them anymore. And that's it. And they actually, they do adapt. They don't, they don't, you know, they're not going to go and buy them from the shops. But you're absolutely right that cooking is a really good way of teaching kids about nutrition and helping them have some control as well. So my kids, essentially, we have this rule, if you want a cake, you have to cook it. And so they don't cook that often. But when they do cook, they're beginning to see exactly how much sugar, and it horrifies me, actually, how much sugar goes into cakes. So much sugar. Even if you, you know, homemade other good ingredients, but sugar and, you know, flour is basically, sadly, the same as sugar once it's digested. <laughs> so these things that we think of as not that bad really and truly when you look at what's in them not so fabulous but it's not about excluding it all the time it's acknowledging what it is and enjoying it for what it is and going okay I can eat that occasionally but what I can't do is eat that every single day for every single meal and that comes back to your limits and saying you know teaching your children those limits as well you have given us so much great information in just a short time <laughs> So, and I'm sure everyone has lots of more questions for you. So how can we connect with you? How can they find you? Oh, well, thank you for asking. So my podcast is Fit and Fabulous at 40 and Beyond. And I talk about adult health and habits, these habits. I think it's so easy to read a book and then 
put it down and life carries on. And really and truly, it's about making those changes and how we can sustain those changes. Um, and my website is Dr. Orlena, so that's D-R-O-R-L-E-N-A.com. And that's my little corner of the internet. And that's where all my podcasts are housed and obviously on iTunes as well. Excellent. And we're going to make sure we have all of that in the show notes so people can find you and connect with you and figure out how they can make some healthier choices for their family. And thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure as well.